What we need is not more medication, but more education, because the best prescription is knowledge. This is Exposé, coming to you live from Lagos, Nigeria, every Monday on Instagram, YouTube and Facebook simultaneously. And I'm your regular host, Tony Akiyami. Don't forget, don't forget, don't forget. what we need what is we not need more is medication, more medication more but more education, more education, because the best prescription is knowledge. You are welcome once again to Exposé, brought to you by the Shepherd's Flock International Church. I'm your regular host, Tony Akinyemi. Today, uh, hopefully, we'll be able to conclude the series that we started on that is the cause of disease. We have dealt with seven major factors that can contribute to disease. We have dealt with deficiencies, we have dealt with abuses, we have dealt with toxicity, we have dealt with injury, we have dealt with infections and infestations, we have dealt with sedentary living, six of them. Today we are dealing with the seventh one, and this will be the concluding episode in this series, and that is the issue of stress. Now, like I promised, I hopefully in the future, Christ tarrying and God permitting, we will do a full series on stress management. So whatever it is that I share today is just introduction to stress management. Just to give us a little bit of an understanding, some preliminaries to help us appreciate what stress is and the role that stress plays in the causation and the progression of disease. Uh, it has been said by researchers that of the 10 leading causes of death in the world, or the 10 topmost diseases that cause death in the world, that stress contributes to six out of the 10. The 10 diseases that kill people the most in the world, out of those 10, stress is a major contributor to six of those diseases. Now, in the 20th century, from the beginning of the 20th century till about close to the end of the 20th century, infections took the center stage as the major causes or the major cause of disease. But towards the tail end of the 20th century into this 21st century that we are in right now, stress became a major competitor, a contender, a major contender in the things that cause disease. Because in the 20th century, scientists focused on finding answers and solutions to infections and infestations. Okay, that's when antibiotics were developed, you know, antiviral medications were developed, and antifungal agents were developed, and researchers in the natural health community also found natural herbs and substances that can serve as antimicrobial uh, agents, antifungal agents, antiviral agents, antibiotics, uh, and a lot of progress was made in the 20th century in finding remedies, either pharmaceutical remedies or natural herbal remedies for infections and infestations. But then, towards the end of the 20th century, another contender came on board, and that was stress. Now, before the advent of industrialization, human beings lived in small communities, not in large cities. Almost everybody knew everybody within the village or within the small town. And commuting from your house to your office was a matter of minutes. You know, five minutes, 15 minutes, you know, you're already at work. You leave your work, and in 30 minutes at most, you are back home. But these days, mega cities have emerged all over the world, and uh, the population of cities keep exploding and exploding. Now, commuting from point A to point B has become a major uh, issue right now uh, for those who live in the cities. Now, I happen to live in one of the most populous cities in the whole of Africa. 
In the city of Lagos, where I live, as of today, it is estimated that the population is in excess of 20 million people. So I live in a city of more than 20 million people. You can imagine how chaotic such a city can look like. You know, a place where you can commute from point A to point B in other places for less than 15 minutes. In a place like Lagos, it might take you three hours, sometimes four hours. So that brought a new dimension, stress, into the equation. So stress is a cause or contributing cause to many diseases, whether it be hypertension or stroke or sudden death or anxiety or you name it. Stress becomes a contributing factor. And that's why we need to pay attention to stress. But like I said, I will not be discussing it in full detail in this episode. I'm just introducing you to the subject of stress as one of the seven major causes of disease in human beings. Okay, what I want to focus on today more is to help us understand what stressors are and to help us divide them into four categories. Four categories of stressors. Some of these stressors, some of us don't even realize or recognize them as stressors. But as we begin to examine them, you see that some of the things you didn't pay attention to in the past are actually stressing your life, and you need to do something about them. Okay, but before we divide or categorize stressors into categories, the first thing is to understand what is a stressor. Well, as the name goes, a stressor is anything that stresses. <laughs> Isn't that very straightforward? Very simple. Anything that stresses you is a stressor. Okay? And basically, a stressor can present itself in two formats. One, it could be an experience that brings stress. It could also be an environment that gives you stress. So we have stress factors that are divided into those two. There are stress events and there are stress environments. Get those two clear. I'm not categorizing yet. I'll still go to the four categorizations. But I'm trying to help you delineate that the things that stress us can either be an event, something that happens within the time frame. Okay, maybe some of them in a few seconds, some of them in a few minutes, some of them maybe hours, but they are stress events. Stressors can be stress events, or they can be a stressful environment. In other words, you live within the context, within an environment that is very stressful. Now, we'll be describing all of that, okay? So, you need to be able to distinguish between the kind of stress you are facing. Are they stress events, or are they stress, are you living in a stress environment? Let me give examples uh, in each category. For example, a stress event will be like when somebody is suddenly attacked by armed robbers or by bandits or by kidnappers or by, you know, somebody that just pounces on you unexpectedly. You didn't anticipate it. Normally, stress events happen bust and they just dissipate and they leave sometimes almost an indelible imprint on our psyche. They leave an impression on our minds that sometimes it takes months, if not years, to be able to get out of it. Some people live with a trauma for months to come, for years to come. Sometimes such stress events redefine us. They redefine our perception about life, our perspectives to life. When we experience certain shocks in our lives, they change our orientation in many ways. Sometimes they change our attitudes in many ways. Those are stress events. If somebody gets involved in an auto crash, that is a stress event. If somebody goes through a nine-month pregnancy, the nine months could be very challenging and very stressful, but it's just a period of time, nine months. That's a stress event. It's not something that happens for nine years or ten years. Okay, those are examples of stress events. Or somebody who writes an exam, preparing for an exam, promotion exam at work or in school, 
or somebody who's preparing for a job interview, I mean, for the moment that you are preparing for that test or preparing for that exam, you are burning the midnight candle, you are studying, you are preparing, that could be very stressful. But you know that the moment you finish the exam, the event is over. It was a stress event. And then you can go on holiday and vacationing and rewind, unwind and relax and all of that. So those are examples of stress events. What about stress environment? Again, if you live in a place like Lagos, Nigeria, where I live, where over 20 million people are crammed into a very small geographical space, and we have heavy traffic on the road almost on a daily basis, sometimes including weekends, that a place you should have traveled for 15 minutes from point A to point B, you are spending three hours to get there, held up in traffic gridlock, and you live in such a situation, not just for one year, not just for nine months. Yeah, I mean, you, you live in it for decades. I mean, I, I have been living in, in this city, in this Lagos city, for over three decades. This is my fourth decade running now in this city. I, I have lived in this environment like that. Okay, that is a stress environment. Usually, you don't have control over the stress environment, but you have to learn the, the tricks and the techniques for your survival, for you to be able to cope where you find yourself in an environment where you cannot control the environment. If you live in temperate regions where there is a lot of snow, a lot of cold during winter, you don't have control over that. You cannot control the weather. You can't control the climate. You can control a small space in your house or in your car by putting on your air conditioner during summer and putting on your heater during winter. That's the measure of control that you have. But in the general atmosphere, you don't have any control. When winter comes, winter comes. And winter could be really stressful on the body and on, on our health, particularly the highly vulnerable, the aged and maybe children. All right? So those are stress environments. You don't have control over them. Okay? Now, but when you understand that when you live in a stress environment, you can learn techniques and tricks to mitigate the impact of a stress environment that positions you to be a winner. And then stress events, even though sometimes they are unpredictable, sometimes they are predictable. I mean, if you're going to relocate from your house to a bigger house, that's a stress event. But it may take just two months, three months for you to pack and unpack and settle, and it's over, and you continue your life. And when an armed robber suddenly pounces on a person, it, usually they come unannounced. That comes unexpectedly, unanticipated, and that could be very traumatic. That's a stress event. All right. Now, I have explained those two types of stressors. But now what I want to do is to categorize all kinds of stressors, whether they be stress environments or stress events or whatever, into four categories. There are four categories of stressors. The first category of stressors are called internal stressors. Internal stressors. Uh, and that could be due to two main factors. The first one are physiological factors, and the second one are mental factors. These are things that are going on inside of us, internal to us. Your mind, your thoughts, your meditations, your belief system, and the things you ruminate over, the things you reflect upon, the things you think about, and the activities going on in your body, your biology, okay, physiological activities going, in, going on in your body. Those are two types of internal stressors. Don't forget, we are looking at four types of stressors. The first one is internal stressors. And I said internal stressors can be divided into two types. We have physiological factors that can cause internal stressors, and we have mental factors that can cause internal stressors. So what are examples of physiological factors that can be responsible for internal stress? One, nutritional imbalance. When an individual has nutritional imbalance, you have too little of something or not at all, you have too much of another one, that is imbalance. And that kind of imbalance can affect the way your body works. Okay? For example, if somebody is deficient in vitamin A, the person can begin to experience night blindness. Okay? And that can begin to affect that person in some way, psychologically. If a person is deficient in certain nutrients, the person can become moody and depressed because of the deficiency in such uh, nutrients. So those are nutritional factors. 
uh, that can, I mean, physiological factors that can cause some form of stress within the internal environment, nutritional imbalance. The second example of a physiological factor that can be responsible for internal stress is your gender. I mean, I am a man, for example, a male. I mean, that's obvious. I don't need to tell you that. Uh, okay, I'm not confused about it either. I know I was born a man and I remain a man and I will die a man. <laughs> Praise God. Now, as a man, there are certain things that a man faces just because he's male. For example, I have to shave every other day. <laughs> every other day I have to shave and shave and shave. I mean, some men will wish that they didn't have to do that. It's part of the daily chores and daily routines that make them to feel, wait a minute, what's all this? That's why you see many men these days, they just leave the beards in place. They just don't want to touch it. Okay, it's one of the fashion uh, signatures of the modern times, particularly among youths. Everybody is bearded right now. Uh, okay, but even some of those who are bearded, they still do a lot of shaving, and uh, that's for the man. Now, what about the woman? The woman, her gender also has some kind of internal stressors that it brings along. A woman goes through her mo monthly cycle. I mean, four to five days to six days, some cases seven days a week, they have to take care of themselves because of their menstrual cycle, that is stressful for some women. They just don't like the idea. If they had another option, maybe they would choose it. That is a kind of internal stressor, which is physiological in nature, and it is gender-related. I mean, men don't have to face that. Those are some of the things we're talking about. Now, the third one is certain pain. We can feel pain inside, which is a physiological factor. And when there's too much pain in the body caused by whatever factor, that can also mount a lot of stress upon us. Then chronic and acute infections that take place within the body can also upset so many things in the system and cause physiological stress, which is the first part of the internal stressor. Don't go away. I'll be back shortly, and we will continue this conversation on the four categories of stressors. The first one being internal stressors, which could be physiological or mental. We have looked at the physiological. When I come back, I'll be talking about the mental. Thank you. I believe you've been having a terrific time with me on Expose with Tony Akiyemi. We have great resources that will bless your life, available to you on healthy living and many other life subjects. We have various platforms where you can obtain material for your blessing. You can obtain some of our work, our books, particularly on Amazon.com. How to Regain and Retain Your Health is a book title that I highly recommend. It's available in digital format, Kindle edition, as well as in printed version. We also have juices and smoothies for healing, health, and pleasure. You can also find these items at another website, familabooks.com. F A M I L A books.com. And for those of you who are in Nigeria, you can reach us at the Shepherd Store, 18 Shogunle Street, off Mobilaji Bank Anthony Way, behind HFS Place, to get our materials. We have over 600 recorded audio CDs. DVDs, VCDs, and MP3 on various subjects. All these things that I teach on Expose are already available in their complete format. How to reverse hypertension naturally, how to reverse diabetes naturally, how to reverse arthritis naturally, and many other wonderful titles. I encourage you to visit this website, Amazon.com, FamilaBooks.com, or CSS Bookstores in Ikeja, Lagos, Nigeria, and you will be blessed reading those materials and sharing them with your friends and family. Thank you once again. God bless you. Welcome back. This is Expose, brought to you by the Shepherd's Flock International Church. And I am your regular host, Tony Akiyemi. Don't forget, what we need is not more medication, but more education. And the best prescription is knowledge. To be informed is to be transformed. To be uninformed is to be deformed and we bring to you information for your transformation we're talking about stress as the seventh factor in the causation of disease and we have said that stress can be an event and stress can also be an environment and anything that brings us stress or anything that stress stresses us 
is a stressor. We're looking at four categories of stressors. The first category, internal stressors. And it could be physiological or mental. We have looked at the physiological stressors, okay, which could be as a result of nutritional imbalance. It could be as a result of gender. It could be as a result of some trauma that has inflicted pain or caused pain in the body. It can also be as a result of infections and infestations that can cause a kind of distress to our physiological setup. Now, the second type of internal stressor are mental in nature. Okay, we all relate with people and offenses do occur. Somebody can offend you, somebody can wrong you, rightly or wrongly. Sometimes the person has actually not really done anything wrong against you, but you perceived that the person has wronged you. Even though in actuality, if it is really, really examined, the person may not necessarily have offended you, but that's the way you see it. That's your own perception. And so you take offense. Or it could also be that the person actually offended you and then you take offense. And that will upset your internal chemistry. It will affect your emotions. It will affect your mood. It affects your psyche. Uh, so it, it creates an imbalance in your psycho-emotional configuration. Those are mental factors. It can lead to emotional strain. It can lead to depression. It can lead to anxiety. It can cause fear. And some things can happen around your life that also makes you to develop, you know, worry, uh, hatred, bitterness, unforgiveness, resentment, malice, animosity, all of these things are mental factors that can bring stress to our minds, stress to our lives, and there's a mind-body connection. All of these forms of stressors are described as internal stressors. So that's the first category. Now, the second category of stressors are what we call external Stressors, and I think that should be a given. If there were internal stressors, then there should be external stressors. Now, internal stressors, as you could see, they are physiological in nature, they are mental in nature, they are internal to us. They, they are the internal activities, internal uh, occurrences, internal chemistry, internal modulations going on within our body, inside of us. Sometimes we can regulate them, we can modulate them, we can control them. Sometimes they get out of control and you probably need somebody else to help you to get out of them. But then the external stressors, which is the second category, are the ones that come from outside the body to impact the body. It could be stressors which are physical or environmental in nature, or they could be spiritual in nature for those of us who are people of faith, we do know that there is also the spiritual domain outside of the natural domain. Now, in the natural domain, the physical environment can stress us in some way. Trauma is an example. Pollution is an example. Temperature extremes is another example. Natural disasters like hurricanes, tsunamis, you know, and all the different disasters, earthquakes and the earth tremors and all kinds of things that we experience in the environment, all of them can bring stress to us. We call those external stressors that are from the environment, physical and environmental factors. Now, for example, pollution. Uh, you may not have absolute control over the pollution that exists in your city. I mean, I traveled to Port Harcourt in Nigeria the other day, and I found that almost everywhere had this black soot, this black powder that is settling all over the place. And they said uh, many of them didn't know exactly where that was coming from. And many people live in that city, and they are inhaling the black powder that is in the air, in the atmosphere. It's causing allergies for children. It's causing respiratory disorders for even adults and people who already have COPDs, that is chronic obstructive pulmonary diseases like emphysema, like asthma, and what have you. Upper respiratory disorders are even aggravated as they begin to inhale these things in the environment, the pollution in the environment. Okay? It may be beyond the control of an individual, but if you live in such an environment, you are living in a stress environment. And the kind of stress in that situation is an external stressor. And that external stressor is coming from the pollution in the environment. I also made mention of temperature extremes. Either too much heat or too much cold. That can upset many things within our system and destabilize us in some way. 
Then there are spiritual factors also that can be responsible for stress. I have seen people that have gone through challenges and issues of life that by the time you probe deeply as a man of the spirit or a woman of the spirit, you will tell, you can tell that this is not ordinary. This is spiritual in nature. Okay, in the Bible, there were people who came under, under siege, as it were. Okay, if you read 2 Kings chapter 19, you will see that even Elijah the prophet, you know, was, was besieged, as it were, by, by Ahab and Jezebel. Okay, that Jezebel was, was a woman of the spirit, you know, in the negative sense. Okay, today we will call her a witch, all right? And she was there taunting and trying to attack God's servant. Okay, of course, God will always protect his own. The Bible tells us, for those of us who are Christians, that even the hairs on our head are numbered. Not one can fall to the ground except God gives the permission. We are told that our lives are hidden in Christ and God, and we are told greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world, and no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Every tongue that rises up against us in judgment we shall condemn. Okay, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are safe. But the fact that we have protection from these things in Christ does not mean that those stressors, spiritual stressors, don't exist. In Jeremiah 1.19, the Bible says they will fight against you, but they will not overcome you because I, the Lord, will fight for you. But the fact that the Lord will fight for you does not mean that they will not fight against you. So there are spiritual forces that do fight against people. And except the Lord is on your side, they can actually overwhelm you. But thank God, that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And the battle is not yours. The battle is the law. So these are external stressors. They can be physical and environmental, and they can be spiritual. Don't forget where we started from. Number one, the type of stressors that come against us can be internal stressors. They can be physiological. They can be mental. Okay? And the second type are external stressors. They can be physical and environmental on the one hand, and they can be spiritual on the other hand. Now, number three type of stressors or categories or category of stressors is what we call developmental stressors or phase stressors. Phase is spelled P-H-A-S-E, like phase one, phase two, phase three, phase four. You see, life is divided into phases, and the phase of life where you are will determine the type of stressors that will come against you or the, um, the type of stress you are going to face, okay? We call it phase stressors or developmental stressors. That also comes in two ways, if you please. We have growth challenges and we have age-related challenges. Now, growth challenges, for example, if an infant is born today, that baby is going to be growing. Before you know it, the baby will learn how to sit down. The baby will learn how to crawl. The baby will learn how to walk. The baby, the baby will start growing teeth. And when the baby is growing teeth, there are things that we describe as teething problems, okay? Teething problems are growth challenges, growth stressors. You see those babies, they see anything on the ground. When the teeth is about to come out, they are using it to rub their gum because the gum is itching them. Anything that they find, they use it, they take it to the mouth, they are biting. It's because the teeth want to break out. And during that teething period, the child is stressed with growth challenges and the itching is uncomfortable. So the child wants to scratch it as much as possible. And that's why they put everything into their mouth and they rub it on their gum and they are biting it on their gum so that they can kind of relieve themselves a little bit. Right. That's an example of growth challenges. Then we also have age related challenges, which is also a form of developmental stressor or face stressor. For example, uh, when a woman uh, or a baby girl is born and she reaches uh, menarche, you know, that's the onset of menstruation, then she starts dealing with that on a monthly basis. And she does that for approximately 30, 35, 40 years. And then she enters into another phase in her life, which is the perimenopausal and menopausal phase. And when she enters into menopause, she starts, facing, she starts to face another set of, you know, stressors as a woman in menopause, you know, all kinds of nice sweat, mood swing, and all kinds of things that, that are, you know, attendant upon entering into menopause. That's a developmental stressor. Then for most people, particularly men, we have what we call midlife crisis. It happens to women as well, but probably more pronounced in men. Midlife crisis happens and sometimes they are inexplicable for many people because they don't understand it. It's a form of... Uh, face stressor or developmental stressor. For example, when you were 20, 
Maybe you dreamt and you envisioned that by the time you are 40, you will have become a multi-millionaire, you will have built your personal house, you probably will have been married, you've had all your children, and they will be in school and you will be comfortable. Maybe you have become an executive director or a managing director or something, something. You had goals, you had aspirations, you had expectations. At 40, you will have done this, done that, done that, done that. Now you are 55 and you have not even bought a plot of land, not to talk of build a house. Okay, and you don't even have money to buy a house. And you are still there struggling to make ends meet. Or maybe you thought that as a lady by the age of 25, latest you will have been married. By the age of 30 or 32, you will have finished bearing children. Now you are 35, you are not even married. You know, there are some things that begin to happen to you that will affect your mood and affect the way that you present yourself outwardly, particularly in relating to other people. Okay, those are all midlife crises, midlife crises, and they can impact us in ways that are sometimes immeasurable. You can't measure the impact that these things happening as you are growing, the impact that they can have upon your life. You may never realize that. Okay, then there are higher responsibilities that come to us along with promotion and progress in life. Maybe, I mean, for example, I remember the time I went for an interview as a young graduate. I just left university probably two years then. I mean, I did my one-year national youth service, and then I got an employment, and I had worked at it for about one year. I wanted to change jobs, and I needed, I think, I, I thought I needed then a, a better paying job, okay? And so I, I made efforts to get another job, and I applied to this, I applied to this uh, multinational company, and I did their interview, and... Um, I passed all the written tests and the preliminaries, and then it got to the final interview where I needed to meet the director for human resources of that multinational company. That was the final phase. Those of us who made it to the last phase, we were supposed to meet one-on-one -on -one with the director for human resources of that company. And I remember sitting in front of the director, and he asked me some questions. I mean, I was a rookie. I was a JJC, just out of university, inexperienced, completely green, you know. And he asked me, he said, now, you, are, you want to join us in this company, and these are some of our products in this company. He said, how would you help us? And he picked one of the products in the company. He said, how would you help us to sell more of this company in the market? if you join us. And I said, wait a minute, I am an engineer for God's sake. I didn't come here to market products. I said, I came here uh, to be in the production department to help you produce products, you know, and help you service your machines and make sure your machines are running and minimize your downtime. I am not in the business of how you sell your products, you don't sell your products. I was very blunt. <laughs> I, just, I just answered like that. I mean, by the time I finished, I thought I had done well. I didn't know that I shot myself in the foot because who they were looking for was somebody who was an all-rounder, who was willing to produce, willing to sell, willing to lead, willing to do so many things, okay? But, you see, if I had joined that company, even as an engineer or in production or whatever, and, and they had groomed me and groomed me, even though at the entry point I may think that it doesn't concern me whether they sold or they didn't sell, by the time I, I, I rise to a certain level to become a director or become a uh, managing director, of course I have to be concerned with everything going on in every department. Okay? That means that the promotion that comes to me, we also bring additional stress to my life to think about this and think about that and think about that. So when you rise up in your career, it comes with higher responsibilities and it brings more stress. They say new levels, new devils. So that is what we call developmental stressor. That's the type of, uh, the third category. And some of you are probably facing that dimension of stress right now. You don't even realize it. Promotion letter is coming and you are celebrating, you are doing Thanksgiving. You don't know that with every promotion comes additional stress. We call that developmental stressor. Now, it's a positive thing, but at the same time, it can impact your health, whether you like it or not. That's why you see many people who are at the top echelon of leadership, and they are the ones that break down easily because they now enter into developmental stressor zone, and they don't even realize it, that they need to be very sensitive to it and mitigate it. Now, the final one, the fourth category of uh, stress, 
that we're going to be talking about is what we call situational stressors. Situational stressors. These ones arrive from, they arise from circumstances in and around our lives, such as relationship problems, maybe marital problems, uh, or people who are living in very poor conditions, or people who are malnourished, or people who are living in an overtly populated environment, or people who are refugees, people who are living in IDP camps, okay, internally displaced persons within their own countries. I mean, it's not of their making, it's beyond their control, but it is stressful all the same. They are going through all kinds of, you know, sometimes very difficult to describe situations, and they need somebody to come to their aid and help them. These are the different kinds of stressors. So once again, the types of stressors are either internal stressors or external stressors or developmental stressors or situational stressors. Now, stress is needed in our lives to a certain degree, but if it goes beyond that degree, it becomes bad stress. So we have good stress and we have bad stress. Good stress is known as eustress. E-U-S-T-R-E-S-S. Eustress. That's good stress. Bad stress is called distress. Okay? If you know how to play the guitar, the guitar string needs to have a measure of tension, an amount of tension in the strings for it to give the right sound. If the tension is not strong enough, poor sound will come out. But if, this, if the tension is too much, the string can snap, it can cut, and you ruin it. Okay, it's the same thing in our lives. We all need a measure of stress to help us be productive. That's why when you peel an orange and cut it, you have to apply a measure of stress to squeeze that orange to bring out the juice in that orange. If you don't apply that pressure, you don't get the juice out. But if you apply too much pressure, you can actually ruin the whole thing at the end of the day. So when we have a measure of stress, you stress in our lives, it helps us to deliver, okay? It helps us to meet timelines and deadlines because work is elastic. Work can stretch to fill available time. But when you are under a measure of stress, you are able to be at your best and deliver optimally. But when you are too relaxed, we call that that you are laid back. You are laid back. You are not... You are not stimulated, you are not inspired, you know, you are just there, tetere bundukwasli, and you are not delivering on your deliverables. You need a measure of stress, you stress. But when it becomes more than you can handle, more than you can cope with, then it becomes distress, it becomes negative stress. Now, when I do a series on stress, I'll be giving you at least 21 tips on how to mitigate the impact of stress. In our lives, they say that there's no amount of water that can sink a boat until it gets into the boat. You can be in a stress environment, you may not sink in the environment if you don't allow the stress in the environment to get internal to you. God bless you, and I pray for God's peace, God's joy, God's strength to be your portion, to be able to deal with all your internal stressors, your external stressors, all your developmental stressors and all your situational stressors, so that you can live in good health and long life, in prosperity, in joy and peace, and in harmony with all your loved ones until you reach a ripe old age. Thank you once again. This has been Exposé. I encourage you and plead with you to please tell your friends about Exposé. Tell them to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Let them follow us on Instagram and like us on Facebook, and they will be blessed, and thank you for guiding them to our channel. Thank you once again. Have a wonderful and pleasant evening. God bless you. I believe you've been having a terrific time with me on Exposé with Tony Akinyemi. We have great resources that will bless your life, available to you on healthy living and many other life subjects. We have various platforms where you can obtain material for your blessing. You can obtain some of our work, our books, particularly on Amazon.com. How to Regain and Retain Your Health is a book title that I highly recommend. It's available in digital format, Kindle edition, as well as in printed version. We also have juices and smoothies for healing, health, and pleasure. You can also find these items at another website, Formula Books.
familybooks.com f a m i l a books.com and for those of you who are in Nigeria you can reach us at the Shepherd store 18 Shogunle Street of Mobolaji Bank Anthony Way behind HFS Place to get our materials. We have over 600 recorded audio CDs, DVDs, VCDs, and MP3 on various subjects. All these things that I teach on Expose are already available in their complete format. How to reverse hypertension naturally, how to reverse diabetes naturally, how to reverse arthritis naturally, and many other wonderful titles. I encourage you to visit this website, Amazon.com, FamilaBooks.com, or CSS Bookstores in Ikeja, Lagos, Nigeria, and you will be blessed reading those materials and sharing them with your friends and family. Thank you once again. God bless you.